I love these instructions. It says, as a result of bubbles in the coolant, you might hear sounds coming from your cooler on the first run. Just chill out for 15 minutes and the sounds will disappear. Well, all right, I'm chill. And um, yeah, you know, this thing is pretty chill too. Welcome to Machines and More. Now you could easily spend those 15 minutes just staring into this pump chamber here. And it's a really interesting design. So I think you're covered there in terms of entertainment options if you need to wait. So we've been covering cooling options for the Ryzen 7 5800X and there have been a good few air cooling options. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to check out an AIO before I wrap up with a full review of the CPU. So today we're going to take a look at Cooler Master's new Master Liquid Illusion in the 240 millimeter version and a big thanks to the thermal team over at Cooler Master for letting me review this one here. Now, originally I was going to take a look at EK's 240 at the same time as another competing ARGB product, but that one actually showed up with a dead pump and I didn't want to delay this review any longer. So unfortunately, that comparison will have to wait. However, I do think the results with the ML240 speak for themselves. And yeah, not a good start for the EK unit at any rate. Now the distinguishing feature of this unit is this translucent pump over here with 12 addressable LEDs. And also the fans themselves have been on the channel before as these are the master fan halos, which have a ring of LEDs, multiple rings actually. And if you like lighting, I think you'll really like this one here. Underneath the LEDs is in the pump though, is what Cooler Master is calling its third gen dual chamber pump. And I was very impressed with the operating noise. Now this pump connects to your motherboard header with a three pin cable and it should just run at 100%. And it's very, very quiet after those bubbles have cleared out. copper cold plate, which makes for good heat transfer. Now the halo fans aren't bad either. They're not specifically static pressure optimized fans, so they're not the best choice for an AIO, but certainly these are some of the best looking fans that Cooler Master makes. The RGB for these are all handled by a splitter cable, which you can then hook up to your motherboard's five volt header, and then the pump and the fans connect to that cable. But there is also a controller box that's included. Now there are more cables involved, a SATA cable and a USB 2.0 cable that are required if you choose to use the controller. And I wasn't able to test it out just yet since the Master Plus software didn't recognize the controller just yet, maybe because it was too new. Either way though, if you have ARGB on your motherboard, you may wanna skip the extra cables involved anyway. Now the tubes on this unit are very nicely braided, 90 degree swivel elbows at the pump, very nice. And here we have the rad that is about 26 and a half millimeters thick, which is a typical size for a 240 EAO. The heat fins aren't super dense, so that does help with getting a more airflow oriented fan like this Halo to work well. Now for AM4, brackets are installed to the pump block and it just hooks onto the stock AM4 bracket. Now I'm leaving the unit in open air just to get a better look at the unit. But if you're mounting this on the side of a case like an NR200 with intaking fans, you're not gonna see a huge difference in the thermal performance, provided you have exhaust fans that are um, pulling the air outside of the case as well. Now with that, let's jump into the performance with the stock halo fans at 80% and with the chip locked to a voltage of 1.25 volts and an all core frequency of 4.6 gigahertz, we're seeing some pretty good results here and they are better than the Noctua U12A at similar noise levels. These fans are spinning at lower RPMs compared to the NFA 12 by 25s due to the higher noise curve, but still the thermals are considerably better. At a higher voltage, this is in the mix with the dual towers here at uh, 4.7 gigahertz and 1.325 volts. And these dual towers are typically more comparable to a 280 rad. So this kind of slots in where we'd expect. Now I mentioned earlier, the halos aren't the best fans to be using with an AIO. I think they were picked due to looks and testing the Sickle Flow 120s, which are a more balanced purpose fan. 
they spin a little bit faster at the same noise level, and of course, uh, that yields a little bit better thermals. Now, since these are similar fans to those used on the MA612 air cooler that we tested recently, here's an interesting comparison. At identical RPMs and noise levels, is air or liquid a better choice for cooling the 5800X? So clearly, the liquid cooler is better at taming the 5800X, which from my testing so far is very much dependent on the thermal dissipation capability of the cold plate. In fact, my initial run with this AIO wasn't very impressive. It was quite abysmal. So I checked if I could tighten down the unit anymore and with only a little extra mounting pressure and making both knobs as tight as they could go, the unit improved significantly. So if you do end up getting this unit, especially because it only has two points of securing it for AM4, make sure that it's as tight as you can go. So performance with this unit is quite good, even with just the stock fans. And if you're a fan of the look, I would say just leave them. Now it's also compatible with uh, Intel 115X, LGA 1200 or 20XX. The pump brackets are a little bit different. So you would just use the included backplate from Cooler Master with the standoffs. A few details I like about this. These thumb screws on the fans are very convenient and the finish quality of the rad is actually pretty good. Uh, for AIO rads, it's not uncommon to see missing paint on the more inner parts of the rad frame and this one has done pretty well at least. The hardware is decent, kind of a dark chrome finish and it doesn't scream cheap. There's not too many things I dislike about this unit. Uh, for one though, if you're working with an AM4 motherboard with layout constraints, this type of mounting does only allow two tubing positions, so you are at the mercy of that tubing position with the elbows here or here being a viable option for your motherboard and your build. And of course, a two-point mounting solution for AM4 does tend to be a bit more sensitive to proper mounting pressure like I showed here. And this warranty is average at three years. It's longer than something like Arctic's two-year warranty, but it is shorter than Corsair's five and NZXT's six, so keep that in mind. But other than that, this is generally a good unit. And yes, if you're looking for an addressable RGB focused unit and you have a way to show it off, this is a pretty good choice. And right now there's a 240 and a 360 version. There's also a white 240 version, really neat. The 240 has an MSRP of 130 and the 360 is 160 US. So pricing is kind of what you would expect uh, compared to the other units that are lighting focused. So I think it's a good idea for uh, liquid cooling with the 5800X. Certainly it's a hot chip and liquid cooling helps out that thermal transfer. And I hope you enjoy the review, found this information helpful. If so, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and thanks for watching today.